afternoon, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Red Light Sports Ramble. As always, my pleasure to be joined by my co-host, Evan Watollison. And Evan, tonight is Wednesday, which means that it's Twitter talk. And I, I like Twitter talk. It is that night where we actually take we take the fans and the listeners' topics and we discuss them. And so we had posted our question out on Facebook. We posted it on, on Twitter and said, give us our topics. And maybe somebody will call in tonight, too. That would be even better. But I'll tell you what, Evan. I am actually, to this point, I know you and I have talked about it a million times. We just discussed this. But we did get some input today, which makes Twitter talk that much better. Uh, we had some input put from Gene, and we had some input from Ashley. And so we're going to go through the questions, and they both had the common question, and I also had this come up on my timeline a few times today. The first question is, do you think that the Packers should just bench Rodgers for the remainder of the season to protect him? And you and I were kind of joking about this. I could answer how you think. You could answer how I think right now. But to give the short answer, without getting into it, for those people that may be listening for the first time, my thought on the, the Rodgers injury is as long as the Packers are mathematically alive and have a chance to make the playoffs, once he is medically cleared, he should continue to play. Once we are mathematically eliminated, I feel that there's no reason for him to be out there. Now, kind of going with you, where that's where I was before in the middle of this injury. Let's say... He's cleared to play this Sunday against Atlanta. They lose. Then I'm kind of going to lean toward what you're thinking, Evan. Yeah, let him keep playing. He's he's playing. He's not going to get hurt. He's cleared. But up until that point, let's say he is not cleared this Sunday to play, and they lose. Now they're mathematically eliminated. Well, they wouldn't be mathematically, I don't think. So maybe we bring him back against the Cowboys. Detroit does. Yeah, it all, all depends there. So – Again, my point is, if there's a chance for them to make the playoffs, then I say we play Rodgers. Once that chance is gone, I don't think we take the chance and put them in the game to get hurt more. You know, but I'll, I'll let you talk about how you feel about that. And you know, we've said this a, a, a number of times. But for those listeners that may be listening for the first time on how we feel about it, go ahead and give them your opinion. Well, for me, like, I I feel that. If he is medically cleared to play in the playoffs or not, like if we're in the playoff race or not, he should play. If he's medically cleared to play, I think he should play. You know, that's, you know, he's a competitor, and I think it's going to be hard to convince him otherwise. You know, I'm thinking it would be hard to convince him not to play, too, on top of it. But if he's cleared to play, he should play. You know, that's just the way I feel about it. You know, being a, you know, obviously I've never played at, that particular level, you know, but I play football and it's a pride thing. You want to go out on top, especially when you look at a couple of the remaining games. They got the Chicago Bears last week of the year. I know um, it's going to feel a whole lot better beating the Bears last week of the season, you know, affecting their playoff chances if we're mathematically eliminated as, you know, who wants to get swept by the Bears? And it gets him, uh, gets him sharp, gets him throwing some passes so he doesn't go through, what is it going to be? Uh, if he stops throwing a pass right now, if he doesn't throw a pass again November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, almost eight months before he really throws a football a lot, that's an awful long time. So I think he needs to, if he's medically cleared, he needs to uh, throw the football and you know, let's see what we can do from here to the end of the year. Maybe knock the Cowboys out of the playoff race, maybe – ruin the Bears playoff chances so you know, it'll be nice ruining the Bears chance at the Super Bowl for another another year it's always fun it's always fun to beat the Bears it's always fun to beat the it's always fun to beat anybody in our division actually you know at this point Evan you know it, it it's one of those things we I think our listeners are are half and half right now so, you know some are saying yeah play him no matter what others are saying bench him but you you and I did a ramble on should they bench Rodgers to get a higher draft pick? And I think that's totally out of the question, too. I don't think that's why you bench him. I think if he is medically able to play, he's going to want to play. You had, you had mentioned that. Um, you know, you were an athlete. I was an athlete. I played at the, the collegiate level. Uh, I played one season. 
Um, and I'll share this, you know, I had uh, dislocated my shoulder uh, eight times in one season and I had already redshirted. So there was no chance for me to get another medical redshirt and get another year of eligibility. And so I determined that I was going to play once it was to the point where it was not going to get any worse than it already was. And I think for Roger's standpoint is if he's healthy, he's going to want to be on the field. From management standpoint, I mean, you might have to look at it from that that standpoint is, can he risk further injury? And if the answer is yes, he's not going to be on the field. So in short, to answer yeah. this question, and, I, and I'll sum it up, I believe if he's able to play and the Packers can make the playoffs full go, if they're mathematically eliminated from the playoffs before he's able to play, don't play him. Evan thinks – Play him no matter what. Once he's cleared, get him on the field and play. So, you know, this is one of those things, bud. You and I disagree on on how he should be played. But, you know, that's kind of fun. It's one of the rare things we disagree on. But moving into the next question that Ashley had, and, and you and I talked about this. This is, a, this is a pretty neat question. Do you think Mike McCarthy should relinquish the play calling, Evan? Um, I honestly don't think he should. You know, he's had a rough year of the season, but we've seen in the past that, you know, McCarthy, in my, you know, in my opinion, he's very good play call. He's just having a rough year and it doesn't help that, you know, he's down to his fourth, you know, fourth quarterback this season. That doesn't help matters. And, you know, every now and then people get into a rut. He just happens to be in a rut this year with the play calling. Now, the thing that he needs to maybe work on a little more is just the uh, in-game adjustments. That's where he could use some work. If something's working, don't change it. If something's not working, change it. That's what he's very slow at doing usually. Well, I want to touch on that because you had brought this up, and you'll probably remember it. You had you had talked to me about Philbin, you know, in Miami when we talked about coaches on the hot seat. And I think that's one good thing that Philbin did is he helped McCarthy with those adjustments. So I, I agree with yeah. you. Uh, the one thing is we have to take into consideration what you said. We are not playing with Aaron Rodgers the last few weeks, so the run-run-pass thing, as much as it frustrates the heck out of me, I can kind of understand why. But again, too, I think his play calling in the last couple weeks has been one of let's not make a mistake, and you and I have talked about it over and over. If that's how he's going to call plays, yeah. we're going to lose. You know, he's playing not to lose and not make mistakes. I think, you know, maybe now where we're at, we're kind of in a do-or-die situation, having to win. I think he should take the reins off and open it up a little bit. Now, granted, we're dealing with Matt Flynn, right? So maybe we can't do all the things yeah. he wants to do. But let's even go back, Evan, to before the Rodgers injury. You and I had actually talked about it when Rodgers was healthy. Our red zone offense and our play calling in the red zone – you and I questioned a few few of those. So let's break it down a little more specific there. Rodgers is in the game. Our red zone offense was poo. The play calling you and I actually were frustrated with. So when it gets to the red zone, do you think that maybe Rodgers should take over and kind of do like a no huddle, two minute offense type thing and just call the plays as he feels the flow of the game is happening? Or do you think that they should huddle up and let McCarthy call those plays? You know, I, if I'm not mistaken, I do. I think Rogers does have the ability to, um, you know, if he doesn't like to play particular play that's called in, I believe he does have the option of checking into something else. Um, so I, it's hard to figure out where the red zone issue is coming. Is it? Rogers already isn't liking what McCarthy's calling, so he's changing into something else, and that's not working. Or does he not have the ability to call, you know, what he wants? I don't know. I do think, though, that he should have the ability to um, have a little bit more say on what's being run on the field because, you know, I put him up there with, you know, Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. He has such control of this offense. He knows it so well that he could almost be a coach on the field if given the ability to do it. Now, an interesting statistic that I had found, I was um, looking it up last week 
when I was working at my uh, radio station I interned at, Packers were second to last in the NFL in red zone offense this year. Um, last year, they were first, sc- scoring uh, 60% of the time. And the year before that, they were third, I believe, scoring about 58% of the time. And Oh, no, in the 60s again. And this year, you know, for whatever reason, they just can't quite punch it in when they get in the red zone. So I don't know if it's McCarthy's play calling or if it's Rodgers changing into thing. But I would be open to a kind of a more up-tempo thing that – Packers seem to play better with Rodgers when they go up tempo. Yeah, and that's why I brought it up. I mean, when you look at that, if you get Rodgers into that no huddle inside the 20, and the the other thing it does is the defense can't make any adjustments at that time either. The defense has to play with the 11 on the field, and Rodgers does very well in the two-minute drill and in the no huddle. And that's why I brought it up. Maybe that's something to think about in the future as we get into that part of the field. We do have a caller, Evan, so I'm going to – Invite this caller on, and we'll, we'll see what they have to say. Good afternoon. This is Troy and Evan. Who Gentlemen, are we... how are you? Good. How are you doing? Who is this today? My name is Colby Christmas from Speculation Sports. How are you? We're doing good. How are you this good. afternoon? Good. I'm live. I'm live on my podcast. I have a troll on my switchboard. I'm also on TalkShoe. My name is Colby Christmas from Cowport Radio Speculation Sports. I'm live on BTR. I figured I'd call your show. How are you guys doing? We're doing wonderful. We'd, we'd be doing better if... How are you? We'd be doing... Okay, well, I was, you know, it's, it's the week 14, and I think with Green Bay, just shut down, uh, uh, shut down, double check. I think it must have made like an old man, but I think they made the wrong choice with the wrong... They should have had the quarterback they brought in there. They brought in, and I think he shut down, double check. It's a, the, the Packers are done. They're going to get taken down by the Fakers. It's all over in Green Bay. They, they kissed their sister against the Minnesota Vikings here and in this town. My Dallas Cowboys take down the, 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 the bitches in a big way with my, <laughs> my buddy, Nancy Boy. But real quick, I want to ask you a question about the pen stick of my show, Michael Tomlin. Okay? Michael. All right, Tomlin, all right? Yeah. I don't think 100K is enough. I don't think it's enough. I think he's a pen stick. What really made me mad about that, sir, is on Thanksgiving night, that happened. He laughed about it. I talked about my Dallas Cowboy call. I talked about Speckless while I'm talking to you on, on my Cowboy radio call right now, okay? Sure. I, it, I, have you heard anything from the Rooney family at all about the choice that he made and still clinging to the Jumbotron thing, which tells me you have to allocate your crime by saying choice, not mistake. He made a choice to turn his back on the play. I mean, a goaltender turns his back. A pumpkin ball they do. do does, a pitcher, does a pitcher turn his back on the play? No. I, I think he's a pencil dick. I think he's a little liar. I think the Rooney's, if they would have stepped up and told Goodell Saturday morning, we'll take care of this pencil dick. He's done. Now they're going to go after draft choice, and now you're going to hear the Rooney's chirping, just like Timber Steps here in Minnesota. I don't think that's enough. He sullied the seven trophies that are in the outskirts. Thomas is a pencil dick. He needs to go away for the rest of the season and think about his job in the National Football League for the Pittsburgh Pansies. Your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, that I actually uh, I actually reside in Pittsburgh right now. So it was a big topic of discussion, of course, this week. Um, and there's mixed reaction on the talk shows here about whether or not uh, you know what he did. I personally think that he that he did do it. He knew where he was. I mean, Evan and I discussed it a little bit yesterday. Um, when you look at it, he kind of recanted on what he his whole story about those things. And I didn't hear his actual interview. So I don't want to quote things that are not right. But what I heard on sports talk radio this morning on 93, seven, the fan is that, you know, when he went out and actually was doing that, it was the jumbotron, but then he went back, said that he was wrong and had to step this way. But, you know, when you talk about it, I have not heard any comments from the Roonies, any comments from management about Mike Tomlin and what they were going to do with it. Um, When you look at it, he stepped out on the field. I think he knew what he was doing. At that point, being a prior coach, I've been in the excitement of the game and have done it accidentally. I don't think he did it accidentally, but again, I have not heard any comments from the Roonies as far as the punishment goes, I definitely think it levies a fine. Um, if the NFL and Goodell want to make a point, draft pick is the way to go. Um, I think, you know, when you look at it, it's not part of the 
not part of the MO where he's done it a number of times. You know, some people, I guess, will call it Bush League and things like that. But when I look at it, I think he did do it on purpose. He should be levied a fine. I'm not so sure that that a draft pick at this point, but I definitely think they've got to make an example of him as far as that goes. I mean, the, the more pressing question is, Tomlin is struggling this year at Pittsburgh as the head coach. So that's more of a concern, I think, right now is where is the, the future of the Pittsburgh Steelers as far as the coaching goes. But, Evan, what do you have to say? Um, you know, me personally, I think he should have got at least a one-game suspension because, you know, that referee is sprinting downfield at full speed. That player is sprinting downfield at full speed. You know, what happened, because not only was he in the player's way, you know, the players padded and protected. If he would have ran into Tomlin, no, you know, he probably wouldn't have been hurt too too badly or, 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 or at all. But if he would have stepped into the referee's way and the referee would have ran into him, that referee could have got seriously injured. And it's happened before that these referees are sprinting downfield and, you know, the coach is in the referee box and the referee runs into him and the referee gets hurt. You know, that's the angle I look at it. When I think at least a one-game suspension, uh, would have been warranted with the, you know, with the fine. Now, not only is he getting the fine, he's also being suspended a game without pay. And now, should they go as far as the, as the draft picks? Not they only, since they only gave him the fine. Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely be okay with them taking away a draft pick. You know, maybe not a first round pick. Um, I don't, but you know, for the first defense, but I would definitely consider taking away the draft pick because what he did was very dangerous. Yeah, I think the bigger thing here, Evan, is, you know, you talk about all the safety issues and all of those things, and, you know, it was brought up. He turned his back to the play. That whole Jumbotron thing, to me, that, why do you even come up with that excuse? I mean, any coach, and I've coached, I've coached in high school and college, I can't ever remember turning my back to a play. I'd rather watch it live and see it. Why are you watching on the Jumbotron? I mean, that to me was the stupidest excuse I've ever heard. But the other thing is, I just think it's just flat out embarrassing as a coach to, to be put in that situation. I mean, at that point, what are you trying to accomplish? I mean, that's where I come from at that point. But I definitely would like to hear the comments that the Roonies make. You brought up a good point, but I have not heard any. If I do, we'll definitely... Uh, We'll definitely put it out on the show at, at that point. But like I said, the, the reaction here in Pittsburgh has been mixed as to whether or not they agree or disagree with Mike Tomlin. Um, I disagree with what he did being a prior coach. I think it's embarrassing for coaches that you would go out and do that. I don't think by any means it was an accident. And, and again, as far as the penalty goes, you know, all the way up, suspensions and fines. Um, I don't you know, I, I don't think on the first one that we, we go as far as the draft pick, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset if they did. You know, even if I threw it into the Packers part, you know, if it was Packers coach, I wouldn't carry their way. I think a lot of it goes to the character. And so maybe that's what we're looking at here is why is he doing that at that point in the game? You know, it, it just, to me, is just embarrassing. So I appreciate the comments, though. Thanks for calling in, bud. Any Anything else? I don't know why he's just sitting in my in my switchboard. I, you don't want, you don't need a troll. Mm. You know, before I read about a pedophile getting killed, there was a where was that? Was a troll number here? I I just logged into the into the uh, in, into his his radio show, Evan. So that was a great call, you know. And like I said, I've not I've not heard very good call. I, I've not heard anything from from the Roonies, but I definitely you know it'd be interesting to see. So that gives us uh, just a couple yeah, gives us a couple minutes here, Evan, and we'll we'll wrap up with Ashley's last question. And I appreciate Ashley emailing us some questions. The last question is: Given the absolute lack of strong secondary involvement in the defense, do you believe another strong draft choice would help relieve the problem, or should Ted Thompson sign a free agent veteran? I think he needs a new ball. I think because if you're drafting a if you're drafting a person and there's a uh, I'm sorry a safety from Alabama that's supposed to be very good I uh, believe it's Ha Ha Clinton Dix is the name that's a very strange name but he's supposed to be very good I think he would be a big help to the secondary 
But the thing that you have to then be concerned with is how long would it take him to be ready to go? Is he going to be able to go on the field right away? Or he t- need a little bit of time to develop. So I think they got to do both. I think they got to bring a veteran in to you know fill in if he's not ready to go right away. And then you draft him, you know this uh, guy from Alabama, or even draft another corner and move Micah Hyde to safety. But I think they do need to draft some someone in the secondary in general. I'm thinking safety, but I'll be fine with the corner and moving Hyde to safety. But I think they also have to sign somebody too. Yeah, I, I agree. And the only problem we have here is we all know how Ted Thompson works in free agency. He's pretty much as as quiet as a mouse in free agency. So we'll see what happens. But maybe this season will change his thinking a little bit. And he will go out and he will look. Yeah, because f- he's. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'd say he's shown in the past that he is willing to sign the right person for the right cost because, you know, Charles Woodson and Ryan Pick. There really hasn't been anybody since them, but, you know, those two come to mind. Yeah, and, and I agree with his philosophy. We don't want to break the bank. We don't want to overpay a free agent maybe on the downside of his career, and maybe we don't want to overpay for somebody who isn't, you know, proven. And what I mean by that is somebody that has that one great game or that one great year and AKA Matt Flynn getting a bunch of money in Seattle yeah, because I of that. Thing. You know, and or so Bob Johnson, <laughs> the other guy. Exactly. And so I'm okay with him not overpaying, but I think he needs to make some moves in free agency this year. At least bring some people in if we can get him at the right cost to to develop the younger players. You and I talked about it yesterday. We just don't see the development happening. And I think part of it is because we're so young, we just don't have the leaders. Now, bringing in somebody, too, it's like rolling the dice. Hey, quick FYI, I know this is college football news, but apparently the uh, Winston from Florida State, the uh, results of the investigation is going to be announced tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Well, that sounds good. We may have to touch on that before we do the Packer preview tomorrow. Uh, that's definitely a, a big yeah. thing. And, and to come out before the Heisman voting, um, that could very that could affect how the voters vote. And the ACC championship game, too. It could. It could very well. There's a lot of implications. That'll be really something to, to keep an eye on. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure that'll be something we'll, we'll definitely discuss tomorrow. But, you know, going back to the Thompson thing, definitely need to, to add some free agents, I think. And maybe this year when he sees that, you know, our backup talent was not where it needed to be, you know, he may go out and make some of those moves. And I was going to say, you know, before you brought in the Winston news, it's like rolling the dice, though. I mean, you bring somebody into a new system. Are they a natural leader? Will they be a leader on the field with their play? We don't know. You know, it's the same thing with a draft pick, yeah. though. You can be a number one draft pick and not be a talent, or you could be a six-round draft pick and be a great talent and a leader. Who knows? So a lot of it is, you know, you're yeah. ro- rolling the dice there. But, you know, with that said, Evan, you know, I know we're just about ready to wrap it up here. And so, you know, I, I want to thank Ashley and I want to thank – you know, Gene for giving us some Twitter topics tonight. Twitter talk is always fun on Wednesday. We had a great call in today. I, I appreciate the call. Feel free to call in any time. Um, you know, as you said, Packers did kiss their sister against Minnesota, and we said that a number of times when that game ended in a tie. But, you know, with that said, Evan, I'll let you do the, you know, the ritual of the thank yous at, here at the end, and then we'll let the listeners go, and, you know, we'll get back at them tomorrow. Well, thank you to the listeners. Again, thank you to the caller. Appreciate it. You know, Troy said call anytime. You know, Ashley and Jean, thank you. Keep uh, keep the questions coming. We enjoy fan interaction. And thank you to Cass and your daily fo- your daily Cowboys football fix dot com and uh, the help that they're offering us. And thanks to the website PackerNation dot com, who you know we can talk about a little bit more tomorrow. But we're also going to be possibly including our show on that site as well. So I hope you didn't mind me breaking that news. But, no, uh, no. you know, we'll be back tomorrow to talk uh, Packer preview. Yeah, definitely. And just to, to touch on that a little bit, uh, Corey had reached out to me today. Uh, we're going to look at some things, see if it's a possibility. We're not, you know, it's it's not set in stone yet. Uh, we're just discussing it. But to be able to get on PackerNation.com will be wonderful for the Red Light Sports Ramble. Um, and just again, my thanks uh, to Evan for co-hosting. Thanks to the listeners, Ashley and Gene. And 
We'll see you guys at the next red light. Enjoy your night. Have a wonderful day.